Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step demo on how to withdraw Bitcoin from your PayPal account back to your own wallet. A lot of people have been receiving payouts from the Celsius bankruptcy, and those coins are going either into PayPal or Venmo. And a lot of people don't realize that even though PayPal and Venmo can accept crypto deposits, they are not really self-custody wallets. They are custodial solutions. It's just like having your coins on an exchange or another server like Celsius or BlockFi. So what we want to do is get that crypto off those exchanges and into your own wallet so that you can avoid the fiasco that you went through with the whole Celsius debacle. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'll demo three different wallets. I'll show you how to do it on a Ledger device using Ledger Live, a Trezor device using Trezor Suite, and also using a Tangem wallet with the Tangem app. So hopefully uh, you'll get a good idea of how we do crypto transfers. So let's jump in. So I'm logged into my PayPal account and I do have some crypto in my PayPal account. It is under finances over here. And as you can see, I have an available balance and I've got a little of their stable coin and a little of the Bitcoin. We're going to do the Bitcoin today. That seems to be what most of the people were storing on Celsius and have been given back a portion of their uh, holdings, right? You might, some of you might have had Ethereum too. It's very similar. I can also show you how this works on the phone. It's very similar. We'll start off with uh, the ledger. What we wanna do is move our Bitcoin from our PayPal account into our ledger device. Now, I know there's, I have a lot of accounts, but don't get too overwhelmed by that. Uh, you should have a Bitcoin account. Uh, if you don't have a ledger device or ledger live set up, I've got a great video on how to do the setup of the Ledger device with Ledger Live. I'll put a link to that up in the description below. So now that we have our Bitcoin account set up and ready, we want to receive some Bitcoin. So uh, what we need is the address of our Bitcoin wallet. So uh, you do that by clicking receive. Now, when we do this, uh, we wanna run the hardware check on our device. We want to make sure that the device is in fact synced up to this account. Sometimes people have more than one device or they accidentally reset their device, have multiple configurations and get error messages. So we want to make double sure that this device is synced up properly to this account. So when we do the receive, we just click the button here and then uh, choose continue. You should have already had your device connected to your computer with your cable and entered your PIN and unlocked the device. When you, when you do a receive and request a receiving address, it's going to query your device and ask you to open the Bitcoin app on your device. So go ahead, click both buttons to do that. And there you are, that's your Bitcoin address. And uh, you can see that same address over on your device. This is very important. Make sure that you get this hardware check done so you're not just dumping crypto into an account that you have somehow lost access to. I've got had a lot of people uh, with issues in Ledger Live because they've uh, something has gotten screwed up. It's, it's human nature. So always make sure that you do this hardware check. All right, double check that the addresses are the same. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this into my clipboard so that I have that address. And then we can go ahead and finish that verification by clicking the right button. And then when we get to the approve, we'll just click both buttons. And that's it. We can disconnect the device. We've already verified the address. We have the address in our clipboard. We don't need to leave the device connected for the transfer to occur. Uh, the transfer occurs on the blockchain from one blockchain address to another. So let's go back over to PayPal. And uh, we're going to do a send, right? We're sending from PayPal. So we'll click send. 
and then we'll choose our Bitcoin. And they give us choices here, name, phone, email, or Bitcoin address. We're using Bitcoin address. So we'll paste that in here. All right, and it's going to show it again down here. You can double check it to make sure. All right, go ahead and click on that. And now we're ready to go. Now I'll point out right here, if you've got $20,000 worth of Bitcoin, please don't try to send it all in one fell swoop without first testing this out. Uh, I'm doing my very best to show you how to do this step by step, but it's very easy to make a mistake, send it to the wrong address. And if you do that, you're going to lose access to your cryptocurrency. Crypto transfers are irreversible. So please do a small test first so that you confirm it's going to end up where you want. All right, I'm going to send just a small amount of it. I am going to incur some fees by doing it this way. Uh, but I'm also going to show you how to do this with some other wallets as well. So let's hit next. Ah, I've got a minimum. Okay. <laughs> all right, so there is a minimum for me. Uh, so actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it all. But before I'm done, let me show you how this works with the other wallets, right? Let's go back here to the send interface. Over in Trezor, if we have a Trezor wallet, we'll basically do the exact same thing. I'm going to disconnect my ledger device. I'll connect my Trezor device. I'll go ahead and get my pin entered. All right, and once you've got your device unlocked, we'll go over to the Bitcoin account and basically we'll do the same thing. We'll hit receive. And when we click show full address, it's going to do that hardware check that I was referring to. All right. And very similar to the way the ledger works, we do the hardware check. Uh, we can see the Bitcoin address on the device and on the screen. And that way we can confirm that everything is working properly. So uh, with the Trezor T, we just click this. Uh, we just tap the screen button. That goes away. And now we've got the official address. We'll just hit copy address. We'll go back to PayPal and paste that in. And it's pretty much the same thing, right? We'll click the address, move on to the next screen. I'll show you how this finishes out, but I'm going to show you one more wallet just so you can get the hang of this. Notice Bitcoin wallet addresses are formatted in a specific way and PayPal will recognize that. So if it's not a correct Bitcoin address, it's going to, uh, it'll complain about it. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you the Tangem wallet. We'll just go over to my Tangem wallet. And uh, with the Tangem wallet, all you really need to do is go into your app, tap your Bitcoin, and once again, do receive to generate that Bitcoin address. The, the Tangem app does not require the hardware check for uh, receiving, only for sending. All right, there we have our address. Now, uh, I'm doing this on my desktop copy of PayPal, so I need this long address, and I'm not going to want to try to type it in manually. We might make a mistake doing that. So I'm going to share the address with myself. I'll just send that address to myself so that I can gain access to it through my desktop-based email. All right, so I'll just check that email, copy it into my clipboard, and I can even double-check that here by looking at it again. Right, we can uh, just double-check it on our, uh, in our Tangem app and over here in my email copy it into our clipboard, go over to PayPal, paste that in. And once again, PayPal recognizes that as a valid email address. So I can just click on it and go to the next screen. Now, if you wanted to do this uh, all from your phone, we could do the same thing. Uh, with the Tangem example, it's pretty easy. We'll just tap Bitcoin, tap receive. And in this case, we'll just copy it into our phone clipboard. Then we can slide over to our PayPal account, uh, do our crypto withdrawal, or send in this case. 
and just paste it in by tapping and pasting. All right, we pretty much get the very similar interface there and it's ready to complete the transaction, All right? Uh, we could do the same thing with our Ledger Live app. Get our Bitcoin address. In the case of the uh, phone-based app, you'll want to have your Ledger device within Bluetooth range for this uh, hardware verification. Through the Bluetooth, the device is indicating that I need to open the Bitcoin app again. I'll click both buttons to do that. And then on my phone, I will tap verify my address. Alrighty, in my case, I have two different devices, but basically you'll just tap on the device name and then it will connect through Bluetooth so that you can verify the address. And very similar to what we did before. Uh, we'll just click here and then click approve with both buttons. And now we verify the address, we're good. We can copy it into our clipboard. We're done with the device, right? We've already done everything we need to do on the device. Uh, and then uh, we can slide back over to PayPal. And once again, uh, we'll just tap and paste that address in and then PayPal will recognize it as a Bitcoin address and take us to the next screen. So uh, now the Trezor device is not compatible uh, with the mobile. There is a, um, the tr my Trezor device is not, uh, Trezor doesn't have any devices that are uh, capable of uh, mobile uh, iPhone apps. Now I believe there might be a cable connection kit uh, for use with a Trezor on the Android phone, but it's not available on the iPhone. There is a Trezor app which you can use. I have it on my phone, but uh, as you can see, it's not totally synced up to my Trezor suite. It is a watch only wallet. Uh, you can export your Trezor to this watch only wallet, and uh, you can get you can export your Bitcoin address to the Trezor Suite phone-based app. Over here in the dashboard, if you go to Bitcoin and then over here to the side, you'll want to go to Details and Show Public Key. And then you would scan that with your phone. All right, and then uh, we've got our Bitcoin account on our phone-based app. You can do it this way, although I wouldn't really recommend for Trezor on an iPhone. There's really no way to confirm this in the wild. Uh, so uh, it's a little more risky. Um, so in this case, you know, we just go to Bitcoin and choose receive and it will show an address for me, which I can copy into my clipboard, slide back over to PayPal and paste that address in there. Right, and then uh, PayPal will uh, see that that's a Bitcoin address and advance us over to that next screen. All right, uh, so I've showed you how to do it uh, three with three different wallets uh, on desktop and phone. So I'll just go ahead and complete the transaction here on the desktop using uh, my ledger address. Um, remembering, of course, that there's a $70 minimum, so I'm just gonna send my entire amount. Uh, but always, if you have large amounts of Bitcoin that got put into your PayPal account, uh, please do a small, you know, maybe $100 transfer first, just to make sure everything's gonna work out okay. Okay, I'm gonna just send it all here, or you can just put in uh, whatever amount you're, you wanna transfer, keeping in mind it needs to be more than 70 but I'm just gonna click all of it. All right, they want a security check. PayPal can be a bit of a stickler when it comes to that. Uh, they're gonna send me a text. All right, I'll just go over and get that code that uh, PayPal just texted me. Well, I'll go ahead and hit send now. 
and off it goes. Now they mentioned there that it might take two hours to completely transfer and confirm. So be patient. Uh, don't get all, all worried when you don't see it right away. It will come in. Uh, but basically we can go over to our wallet and just keep an eye on incoming transactions until we see that Bitcoin coming in. All right, and that Bitcoin just hit my wallet. Didn't take it too long, um, about three or four minutes at the most, maybe even less than that. And notice you can see the incoming transaction here in Ledger Live. You're going to see it uh, orange colored until it completely confirms on the blockchain. Now, this not confirmed, it gets a lot of people worried. They think that there's a problem with it. This is the way the blockchain works. It has to confirm fully on the blockchain before you can spend it or, in other words, send it back out again. So as soon as you see it hit the wallet, you can rest easy and know that it's in your wallet safe and secure. You just can't send it back out again until it is fully confirmed on the blockchain. And this might be a while. This might be an hour or two or even longer, but it's not a big deal. As long as you see it hitting your wallet, you can rest assured that it's in there safe and sound. The same holds for Trezor Suite. When you get incoming transactions, you'll see that they are not confirmed uh, for a little bit. And of course, the same thing holds for the uh, Tangem app as well. Uh, you'll see it hit the wallet, but it might be a while before it fully confirms. So that's it. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how you withdraw your crypto from PayPal back into your own wallet. This is very important. Please do your very best to self-custody your crypto uh, so you won't get heartbroken things like the Celsius bankruptcy or the FTX collapse. You'll be safe and sound with your crypto in your very own wallet. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.